Hi, everyone. I had the pleasure of working uh, with Dr. Kalume's lab at Seattle Children's Research Institute this summer. And my, my project was focusing on the contributions of forebrain GABAergic interneurons in the pathophysiology Lay syndrome related epilepsy. Most of the background is very similar to what my lab mate Favor just went through because our models are based on the same um, disease, Lay syndrome. Uh, just for another quick uh, refresh, Lay syndrome is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder. It is a mitochondrial disease, which means there is a defect in the mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation um, system, and this leads to a loss of energy production which um, becomes a problem for, especially for tissues with a high energy demand, such as the brain or muscle, ce muscle cells. Um, again, characteristic diagnostic sign is the presence of bilateral lesions in the basal ganglia and the brainstem. It is characterized by motor respiratory deficits along with epilepsy. It's the most common mitochondrial disease in infants. Uh, onset typically occurs in infancy and leads to rapid deterioration and death for around two to three years. Although uh, there have been cases of late onset disease. Uh, again, the NDOFS gene, uh, NDOFS4 gene is our gene of interest. It codes for the subunit of complex one of mitochondrial membrane uh, as a part of the electron transport train. Um, this mutation leads to deficiencies in complex one and is linked to early onset Lay syndrome. Looking at our Lay syndrome mouse models, um, global knockout endos four mice are excellent models of Lay syndrome because they exhibit multiple patho pathologies of the disease, including seizure activity, shorter lifespan, respiratory dysfunction, et cetera. And then recently, uh, the lab has also found that mice with cell type specific endos4 knockout and excitatory and inhibitory neurons present different phenotypes of the disease. So we see that with GABAergic or inhibitory neurons, uh, we see seizure, um, more seizure susceptibility in our mice. And with glutamatergic or excitatory neuron knockout, we see respiratory dysfunction and motor alteration. What I'm going to be focusing on is the knockout of those interneuron inhibitory um, inhibitory interneurons. I mean, um, and our central hypothesis are, is that GABAergic neurons of the forebrain are going to play a more prominent role in the generation of seizures compared to their counterparts in the hindbrain. Um, the reason we think this is because the brain regions involved in the generation of seizures seizures are in the forebrain. In order to study this, we've been looking at two lines of mice, um, mice with endos4 knocked out in the hindbrain, our glycre line, which um, uh, the student of last year's uh, cohort, Haytham, worked on. And this summer, I've been working on our forebrain knockout mice, DLX3. So first, I want to look at our gly um, mice from last summer and on we've noticed that they have um, a longer lifespan on average compared to our global um, inhibitory interneuron knockout line. Um, it was still surprising to us though that 100% or all of the uh, gly mice died uh, pretty early on compared to- Let me text my message. Um, yes. And then we also looked at seizure threshold particularly um, thermally induced seizures. This is because although with this mitochondrial disease, um, spontaneous seizures are common. If there is signs of fever, increased body temperature, uh, we found that Lay syndrome patients are, have trouble regulating that. And so they will also seize if their body temperature increases. So we put them through an experiment where we gradually increase um, the temperature of the mice and see how often and when they start exhibiting seizures. So for the gly mice, we found that their myoclonic seizures are typically start around 39 degrees Celsius. And with the generalized tonic-clonic seizures, which are great like involuntary movements um, and are often fatal for the mice, uh, that typically occurs with around 41 and a half uh, degrees Celsius of a body temperature. 
and this is similar to our GAD mice actually, which is the whole um, or the global inhibitory neuron knockout. Um, yeah. I will say it was surprising to us also that um, after following the generalized tonic clonic seizures that we observed, the majority of our fly mice um, died. And now I'm going to talk about the mice that I was working with this summer, our DLX5 Cree, uh, which we generated using a Cree lock system um, with specific MDEF spore deletion in the forebrain. And this is very preliminary data. We're just starting with the uh, generation of these mice. So unfortunately, we don't have as many, as large of a sample size as we hope. But so far, we have noticed that they have a more severe uh, mortality and seizure phenotype compared to both the Gly Cree and the Gad Cree mice. Um, so they're dying, major all of them before 10 weeks of age. That's roughly 40 days old. Um, and then following that, we have our GAD and then our GLY. And then our seizure threshold is also interesting. Um, this is based on one mouse, again, a limited sample size, but we found that they are exhibiting myoclonic seizures at baseline temperature. Um, they didn't have um, any, like, it, they didn't require any thermal stress before they started these myoclonic seizures, but they did um, have generalized tonic-clonic seizure at around 41 and a half degrees Celsius, which we did expect. So in conclusion, uh, we found, again, with preliminary data that mice with end of spore knockout in the forebrain inhibitory neurons are susceptible to thermally induced myoclonic and generalized tonic-clonic seizures, and that forebrain inhibitory neurons produce more severe seizure and mortality phenotypes in, this, in these mice. Um, it was a surprise to us that both the forebrain and the hindbrain inhibitory neurons contribute to this seizure generation um, as seen in Lay syndrome related epilepsy. Although we expect that as we move forward with the study, um, again, that the forebrain knockout will have more severe uh, phenotypes. Uh, in the future, the lab is going to continue the study, increase the sample size, and complete this comprehensive. Um, understanding of the role inhibitory neurons play in the seizure related in seizure generation in Lay syndrome patients in mice. And we're working on this as hopes in hopes that by understanding the pathophysiology of seizure generation in Lay syndrome, uh, we can help develop better, more efficacious treatments for Lay syndrome. And I want to thank everyone who supported me, especially Dr. Kalume. Um, and my other mentors in the lab, and Julie, and Dr. Ellen Bogan, and Sylvia, because it's been a great experience this summer.